So this is it. This is what we're making, a patterned anti-clastic ring. And the metal is seven millimeters wide by one millimeter thick. I like it. We're going to make a patterned anti-clastic ring. So get your ring size, measure the inside when you get it in millimeters. Use the knife edge of your vernier calipers. Write that number down and write the letter or number on your ring sizer down. Get the height of your metal, which in this case is one millimeter. So add the one millimeter to your diameter, multiply by 3.14, and that will give you your exact length to cut your ring shank. My measurement is 55, and the easy way to mark your metal is to just take your dig digital calipers, if you have them, uh, vernier, if you don't, set your size, tighten the little screw, and you can just hang your veneers on top of the metal and sweep the bottom across and it'll give you a nice little line to cut to. You can use your tri-square to make sure that the line is square. Scribe it and saw this mark. Saw just to the outside. When, make sure when the saw goes through the metal it goes into the wood and not into your finger. At this point normally we would file the ends flat, but because we're going to pattern this and it's going to distort the end, uh, we'll wait until after we get the pattern in it. I'm using a little Fritz hammer with a highly polished ball end and just a uh, bench block to hold the metal on. So when I'm finished I'll have this hammered pattern all over the complete thing right down to the ends. And when you're putting a hammered finish on, you make sure that the whole thing has a hammered finish. There shouldn't be any gaps in it. When you have your piece patterned, now this doesn't have to be hammer marks. It can be initials, numbers, it, it can pretty much be anything. Uh, at this point, file one end square, check your measurement, file the other end to your mark and then anneal it. And you have to anneal at this point because you've work hardened the whole thing by hammering it. If you don't anneal it, it'll be almost impossible to bend. So file it back, anneal it, bend it into your ring shape. Hold your piece against your bench peg. Use a flat number two cut hand file. And the file has a safe edge on it and you can check your metal to make sure that it's flat against that edge. Should be nice and flat, shouldn't be able to rock. Okay, at this point, anneal it. Just a nice neutral flame. If you're using LPG, uh, just heat this up until it's a dull red. It doesn't matter what torch you're using. If you shield the metal, you should be able to see the color. And if you can't see the color, see how the flame is turning orange as it's spilling across? When it starts doing that, your metal is annealed. Let it cool until it's not red. Quench it in water. 
At this point, it should be dead soft. Just try bending it in your fingers. Shouldn't take much pressure and it should stay. Uh, if it doesn't do that, I kneel it again. So now we go into the pickle to get these oxides off. Now we have our metal that's been pickled. It's nice and clean. So we're going to take our flat half round pliers, put the half round on the inside, and you're just going to form this into a bit of an oval. And what we want are for the ends to be even and not to be twisted to line up. So we actually want a perfect fit at this point. I just keep bending and twisting and pushing and pulling until this fits a hundred percent. And if you're unsure, look up at the light, look through here, and you shouldn't see any big gaps. And when you get it so that it looks about perfect, it's time to solder it. So you can see, pretty close, no, no big gaps. It, it's a little bit off here, but we can sand, file and sand that out later. So just make sure it's level, both sides, and it's level this way. For this ring, because it's patterned on the outside, we're going to put our solder on the inside, but take your flux. This is Tenacity 4A. Uh, Borax-based flux. And you're just going to put a small amount of flux top and bottom on your join. Three little pieces of hard solder that you pick up with your flux brush and place them so that they're either lying alongside the join or across the join. They need to be touching both sides of the metal. I'll zoom this in so you can see. So you can see I'm on the inside of the ring and my solder bits are touching both sides of the ring shank. Now at this point we're just going to warm that up just gently on and off the metal don't heat this part or it'll open up so we're just heating this bit here if your solder jumps to some place where you don't want it you can push it with your solder pick and what we're going to do now is we're going to heat that so that we're heating on the inside. You're just circling your join. You're about 50 mil away. So the solder flowed and it flowed the whole length and that's what we want. Now the reason I didn't have my flame up from underneath was the solder when it flows tends to follow the heat and I want the smallest amount of solder out here as possible so it doesn't interfere with my pattern. So quench this, pickle it, and then we'll round it up. This is pickled now and you can see that there's just a fine line of solder on the outside. So dry this off. You always dry your metal before you put it on steel. Slip it on your ring mandrel, round it up with your rawhide hammer. And the rawhide because it won't ruin this pattern. Turn it over, do it again. It's so you don't have a taper on the ring. Now at this point, we want to clean up that solder join, but 
we want to do as little as possible. So we're just going to sand this back with our sanding stick, 400 grade paper. And by rounding this up before we tidy this joint up on the top of the curve, we'll just have a tiny amount to clean up. So don't, don't go anywhere except right on the join and try to do as little as possible because we, we want to clean off as little of the pattern as possible. Now at this point, because we've flattened that bit out, we'll go back on the ring mandrel and we'll use the hammer, sorry, we'll use the hammer that we used to pattern it originally to put the pattern back in where we sanded. Done. So now our pattern should be the same everywhere and it should be invisible where we soldered it together. So the outside is pretty much where we want it. We need to tidy our solder joint up on the inside. So I'm just using a split mandrel with 400 grade paper and just spin this up and brush it back and forth across your join until it's disappeared. When you finish you shouldn't be able to see the join at all. Now we're going to tidy up the outside just put a piece of 400 grade paper on your bench and put the ring flat on and just scrub it back and forth until you have a nice dull line all the way around and that'll show you that this all of the bits are equal. When you have the edges to your satisfaction just sand the very outside edge at a steep angle and just to get the little sharp bits off and do the inside with your split mandrel and you're just going to put that on a 45 degree angle on the inside Spin it around. And that's just to make sure that there are no little rough bits. Now we're ready to form it. I'm using an anti-clastic forming stake from Rio and a plastic tapered hammer. And this is so we can form the middle without damage damaging our pattern. So you just pick one of these that the ring will fit over and you're just going to hammer straight down that's all and you're going to turn your ring underneath it so you can see just from that little bit that the ring is already taking shape. So get a nice gentle curve in this. Make sure that you don't put ripples around the edges. If you do, you can always go back on the stake, turn it so that the edge is flat on your stake and just hammer that little bit out just by hammering right on the edge of the ring. Now, you only want a gentle curve on this because when you put it on, if it's a real deep curve, it'll bite into the side of your finger. So this is finished at this point. It just needs to be polished and I would suggest that you put it in the tumbler so that you don't take your pattern off. You can polish it with a polishing wheel, uh, a buffing wheel, but it will erase part of your pattern.